This podcast has been brought to you by the patrons at patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. Last weekend, those patrons raised over $4,000 to benefit Transactive, and um, it was a wonderful, wonderful streaming event. If you'd like to be part of future events, go to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv, kick in a couple of bucks, join the Slack, and just ask somebody how you can help. Thanks, and enjoy the episode. Jeremy Greer. And I'm Gary Butterfield. And this is Days of Future Cast, and we're here talking about um, wrapping up, rather, season two um, and talking about all of your feedback. We've got a bunch of, a bunch of questions and prompts. How are you today, Gary? Uh, I'm doing okay. Good. Glad doing okay. Here. Caffeine's hitting the bloodstream. So Nice. Nice. I and just came out from a delicious Vietnamese lunch, so I'm very ooh. excited. What'd you get? Bibimbap? Um, my wife had the pho. I say my wife, like you haven't met Autumn in real per- in real life. Uh, <laughs> Autumn had the pho. I had, um, some, some lettuce wraps. We're friends with the owner and, uh, he brought out some of his lint menu. Cause lint menu is, is, do you guys do a bunch of lint menu stuff up there in Portland? There's no there's godless heathens in this town. Yeah, I, didn't like think so. I didn't think so. I know so, what yeah. Lent is. Um, uh, what is he, lint menu? Lint menu is, um, because most people give up meat for lint most okay. catholics like it's a big like i'm going to give up meat for this week or, or month or whatever sure so a lot of restaurants have like fish-based menus um oh. so he brought out some like asparagus and crab soup and some like little crab fingers and this nice dipping sauce and it was delicious so this is real real sacrifice you're making there for jesus <laughs> eat them, eat <laughs> yeah. more delicious food uh, um I, I think oh what is a year we have to eat tastier food <laughs> uh, i'm gonna write out one of my friends and i think he might actually listen to the podcast so mike i'm sorry if you're out there but um every year he gives up facebook for lint and i'm mm-hmm. like dude you don't post on facebook like your wife is on facebook yeah. posting pictures of all your kids <laughs> but like it's not like you're like you know playing farmville all the time like i i look at facebook you literally don't ever post on it <laughs> so what are you well, doing it is it, you know how how many and not not putting mike specifically on blast but how many you know how many examples do we need of people taking the letter of religion and not the spirit of it exactly you know before yeah. i think um, i think that the lent is how the fleo fish was born Probably that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 90 certain that's a trivia factoid. I, I know. And shitty that's sandwiches have, like, are kind of the Venn diagram of, um, of religion and shitty capitalism. So yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like if we if we can take because you know fish as a sandwich, like there are different kinds of fish. You know, so when when you just eat like a fish sandwich, it's equivalent to having just like a meat you know a meat sandwich. Yeah. You know, and like you're eating a meat meat pie. Well, I mean, can you give me some more information? (laughs) It's just meat, like just fish. Like this could be anything. Yeah. You know, this could this could be you know, and I know that like it just tends to be like it's like scrotapalooza at at McDonald's or whatever. But like (laughs) the, uh, I know it just tends to be just whatever happens to be like whatever cheap white fish they can get. But it's just always weird to me when someone would just be like, "Here's fish." Racist and then those, ass oh, McDonald's you mean, food buyers. You know, the, the most diverse, like, you know, biome outside of insects. Like, there are more kinds of fish than anything, dog. No, no, no. There's just, there's, um, there's two kinds of fish edible and non edible. That's it. And the ones that, that, that like disguise themselves as rocks to poison your feet. That's, that technically, that's a mammal. So I don't know if oh, you yeah, know. There, there you go. It's a little snorkel. <laughs> I'm going to be um, the pedant arguing about tomatoes and being fruit. So. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, you know. Anywho, um, thanks everybody for writing in. Uh, we're going to answer your questions, your prompts and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, as always, um, there is, we'll be one of these after every season. Yep. So, uh, giving you guys a chance to, uh, to chime in. And I've also got some deleted scenes saved back that I'm going to put Ooh. at the end of this episode. So, um, stuff from that I've edited out of the main episodes that weren't really, you know, actual so, stuff. Just that weren't of... not slurs. Yeah, no slurs, no, no slurs. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, you know, everybody knows that Gary is a big racist, but you know, I try to edit that out of the podcast. So, really, all those people who say that we just do social justice stuff to get clicks are right. Yep. Because if it were up to me, it'd be nonstop racism. However, it just doesn't <laughs> sell. Like talking, it's weird because talking about your personal political beliefs on podcasts is how you get money. 
Oh, that's 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 the, that's the way to podcast dollars. That's the only yeah. way you can be successful in a podcast. Is to game. talk about politics all the time. So mm-hmm. I fake it. I just I talk about the stuff that I'm lying because I just want money. Hey Gary, I voted Trump. Yeah. I don't know if you. Know oh shit, about. dude! <laughs> Mega fist bump. Um, the uh, and the friends of humanity are right. Yeah, like all this time we're talking about yeah. the friends of humanity. Like, yeah, it's just uh, I we you know just you know one during Logan, I was like, yeah, fucking you know genocide these people yeah build that wall i always i always wrote for the guy uh something i saw this about um uh somebody wrote this about bill maher and i I just think it is uh it's really true and and, it kind of describes an archetype of a person um specifically some people you and i mutually know but it's like this person is not uh is not a genius or anything. They're just the kind of person who corners you at a party, gets stoned and tries to convince you that cats are the same thing as dogs. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, that's such a, like, yep. Like that, that is really a thing. <laughs> you know, like, well, actually the opposite is true. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anywho, um, let's, uh, let's get started. Okay. Um, you want to go first? Yeah, I'll get started here with Fletch via email and Fletch says, Hey there boys. Uh, As you head into the back half of the series, how much research do you do about the series beyond just watching the episodes? You're coming up uh, on the point where Marvel's bankruptcy and absolute crappiness of of one of the two uh, studios turns into a lot of production drama and the whole everything is aired out of order. Entire episodes have to be redone aspect Uh, probably marks me as a tremendous nerd, but I've always loved hearing industry train wreck stories like that. I didn't know if there was more if that was more common knowledge or not. I do uh-huh. very little research outside of watching the episodes. Like I'd look up um, about the, like, cause I don't, I like talking about the, the behind the scenes drama. And I think we talked about this. We've already recorded the beginning of season three as, as the, as of the time we're recording this. And we talk a little bit about the episodes airing out of order and like how we're going to approach that in the season and everything. But I don't typically like go and look through like the back end stuff. Like I, I, I look through like IMDb pages to see where actors and actresses went. Um, I like to know kind of things that were happening around it, but I don't, I don't do a lot of research into it as, except for watching the episodes. Yeah, I do. I just do a little bit. Um, I usually will, uh, I'll look at the entries on, you know, tv.com or what have you, mm-hmm. um, things like that. Um, and then I will, uh, Chris Sims does recaps of these, which I, will skim. I don't want to read them because I don't want to steal his jokes. Yeah. Um, but at the beginning of them, we'll sometimes talk about these kind of generalities of the season that he's done, you know, the research on that I don't really want to do, or he's done interviews and stuff like that. Cause that was, you know, he worked for a comic book website and that was, you know, his job as, as far as I know. Yeah. Um, I know. have very specifically avoided even just skimming those articles for that reason. Like I don't want to, yeah, I don't, yeah, he, I don't want to, cause he's kind of known as the, the animated series guy or whatever. So I don't want to like, I don't want to have my stuff influenced by his stuff. Like I'd rather just keep it separate. Yeah. Than... I, I feel like this is a very disappointing answer, but not very much. Yeah. Um, I, or, I feel yeah. bad for flesh. on this one. I really do. Uh, we have another, there's another question later that talks about like those people f- that are, um, that run the X-Men TAS Twitter account. Um, oh, and, sure. And they're, and they've been putting out like lots of information. Um, I, am shy about talking to those people because we kind of criticize and make fun of the show a little too much. And I don't, I, as I think that everyone agrees that the show is ridiculous and dumb. And I, I think even they would agree with that, but there's something to be said about saying that to somebody's face. And I, 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 I shy yeah. away from that. So yeah, well, well, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And exactly. and this podcast started the exact same time of another X-Men animated series podcast that my understanding is significantly more kind of cheerleady. And like, you know, one of the things I think that's fun about the show is hitting that balance of just like, come on, dude. Yeah. You know, like yeah. there's a, like, are you seeing this shit? aspect exactly. of the show that i wouldn't give up <laughs> yeah i don't um, want to i don't want to lose that like this is this is fucking ridiculous like i can't even like i don't want to lose that and i feel like if i know somebody that wrote the words i would feel obligated to not be yeah, as there's, you know d- irreverent about it no creative person is not uh so conscious about old work like that's just kind of how it works you know um even if you're like you know i've i've written songs that like would make people's blood curdle that i can admit are bad but I wouldn't want to listen to a podcast where people just dissect them second by second and talk about how <laughs> shitty they are and call me an idiot over and over. Like Not <laughs> my feelings all. really bad, <laughs> you know? So, uh, it's a, you know, it's, it's a tricky thing. I think that hopefully, you know, what comes through and we kind of answer variations on this or have talked about this kind of thing before, about how much fun it is to do the show and how much yeah. fun we're deriving from the source material, regardless of if it's intentional 
exactly. you know, with the intention of it. Like there's a death of the author aspect. That's like, it's so fun to look at the, the episodes this way yep. and just be like, why, you know, why is this happening? That's very fun for us and fun for people to listen, I think. Um, so we're still getting a lot out of it, but that is a really hard line to kind of express. So the, um, you know, I do look at stuff that they post mm-hmm. uh, from time to time, but I don't interact with them that much because I don't want to hurt their feelings. And I think they're genuinely probably like really good people. Oh, of course. You yeah. Know, like, I, they, I did watch that, that um, um, like that would, screen junkies thing that behind the trailer or like honest trailers, I think it was what it was. Yeah. Like, I watched that and they come across as extraordinarily nice people, which makes me feel even like I, <laughs> I definitely don't want to hang out with them while I'm doing this podcast. Right. Like that just doesn't seem no. like to be a, a good thing. So it would be, it would be awesome to like come to a kind of peace with those dudes. Cause like when they, mm-hmm. when they, they followed me on Twitter, like I was like, man, if I could send this back to my 13 year old self, it would have yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I never would have imagined a life trajectory that brought me to that. Um, but then it's like a monkey's paw version where it's like, yeah, but you know, you're, you're literally just going to make fun of this thing that you totally love. Non ironically now. And be afraid to show your face to these dudes. Yep. So, so that that research aspect that doesn't really answer the question. That's no. one. You know, there are other avenues of research, but um, yeah. So the answer is not very much. And part of the other reason for that is like, as you know, time. It's uh, it's time, and also like the the approach that I've always taken to the show is it's it's half comedy and half like explanation. Mm-hmm. So we're we're gonna tell people about the show. We're gonna do our best to explain it, and we're also gonna do our best to like make people laugh while we do that. And I feel like if we get bogged down in Marvel's bankruptcy woes in the early nineties, like that's there's nothing really funny about that. That's people's lives and livelihoods. So I, I yeah. try to stick it just with the animated series. If something pops up on my radar, I'll definitely like incorporate it into the show notes or something. But it really so far it hasn't actually happened. Um, yeah, it gets it gets a little too real. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I, th- I think, uh, yeah, I think that's, I think I'm with you. Pretty Next question well. is from Jared via email. He says, Hey, Jeremy and Gary, I just wanted to write in and say, thank you for doing the show. For some reason, I have the music from the pilot episode stuck on my, stuck on repeat in my head. Energy blast, huh? I know I have randomly sped it out around the house wildly as my son has picked up on it yeah. and joins me for the quick melody. So simple and effective. Can't wait to hear what you guys have in store for the next season. Fantastic work. And thanks for keeping me entertained. Cheers. Thank you, Jared. That's a very nice. Thanks, Jared. Yeah, that's very nice of you to say. Thanks. Um, yeah, it is hard to come up with ideas for what to do for those, but I think that's good because like the last couple ones have been weirder Yes, uh, because I'm running out of ways to just like literally remix it. So and I'm, we'll I've, see if I can. I very much weird. enjoy pulling out the weirdest stuff that I can find to give you that challenge. <laughs> like I try to give you like a music bed when I pull out. Like I try to get like as much actual music as I can, but then I just try to pull out random shit too to see see what you can come up with. Yeah, if if I feel like maybe this would be a fun Patreon bonus video, and me saying this out loud is not conjuring it and committing to doing it, but maybe I'll live stream doing one of those at some point, or do a YouTube of one if anybody oh, yeah. would be interested in seeing like what the actual process is because it's pretty formulaic at this point. Like there's nothing uh, to coming up with an idea that like is formulaic, but the actual, how I sit down and examine them and kind of figure out which music part stands out and things like that is, is pretty step-by-step. So I'd be interested in seeing that. Yeah, perhaps I will do that at some point. And, and maybe I'll record myself just like dropping an audio file into Logic and looking at my notes for time codes. <laughs> <laughs> the how it's made. Like, ding, 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 oh, yeah. We definitely need like that. Yes. Looks at the time code and compares it to the audio file. <laughs> um, Menthols and beer uh, says via Slack. This is a uh, not a Christian name. This is a, a handle uh, says. In the same vein as the what does Rogue seeing Gambit discussion, what the hell does Wolverine think is so great about Jean? Why can't he stop pining after her? First of all, with all the life experience Logan has, wouldn't he be able to take a rejection on the chin like it's nothing and just move on with his life? I guess it could be, just like y'all said for Gambit, she is just really hot. Uh, She seems to be a boring-ass woman to me. Maybe just some things are revealed in season three. Uh, Wolverine can only go for chicks that eventually become villains. Oh God, the worst fetish. Yeah, the, the, um, <laughs> I can only I can only make it happen with the supervillain gear. That's this it. It's, uh, it's supervillains are hot, man. The um, I hate, like you, know, you look at somebody like Malice and you compare it to like I don't know. I guess that's not true. Super superheroes are hot as well. Um, I think yeah, this is uh, this is kind of you know at first when when I read this uh, on the the actual Slack, I was like, uh, you know, Gene's not that bad. But like Jean took a long time to come into her own mm-hmm. as a character, I think. So depending on and uh, Wolverine definitely kind of fell in plot love with her before there was a lot going on. Yeah, it was uh, definitely it wasn't so much that they wanted to write Wolverine and Jean as they wanted to create conflict between Wolverine and Cyclops. 
That was, that uh, yeah. was, that was what they were going for. Jean, uh, and for most of these stories, especially in the animated series, um, is just kind of like a, you know, just an object to be desired or an object to be someone to be in love with. Um, or for Cyclops to talk about like, not Jean, <laughs> like yeah, that's pretty much the only, Jean. uh, but he, the thing that I, I did want to talk about is, um, menthols and beer mentions like with all of the life experience logan has and i was trying to think about this so if he got out of weapon x and he doesn't remember like the previous 150 years the dude doesn't have that much life experience and the one relationship we've seen him in in the the animated series also ended up with you know death strike which yeah you know is like it's pretty much (laughs) the worst high school girlfriend that you could come up with that's Um, that's a a mimic (laughs) the um yeah yeah he's he's kind of got like and you see him when uh, at least in just animated series when he's like when he's being taught how to read by alpha flight things like that like he does have the mind of a child he does kind of exactly. get reset you know <laughs> um the uh you know and and then the uh he's prior to that you know he's been in the war things like that mm. there, the other way i could chalk this up is just him being like you know since he's been around so long and lived so long he doesn't uh you know it's not so much about rejection he usually doesn't get attached Right. So like it's, you know, and this person's going to die before me at the very least, they're going to grow old. Um, But with Gene, you know, maybe there's part of him that senses this kind of like weird smoldering power, you know, that that's behind her because like the the Phoenix Force is is ain't nothing to fuck with. You know, if like if you like a like a fucking strong ass woman, (laughs) like this is literally like, you know, destroys civilizations left and right. Like this is like Yonsei on a scale that. We cannot imagine. Yeah, give me, give me give me a woman who can destroy a planet in two point three seconds. That's what I'm looking yeah. for. Five billion lives extinguished. That's how I need to get it up in the yeah. room. <laughs> how many civilizations have you ended? <laughs> Your powerful feminine wiles, like you know. So I can see that just being like this. Just is worth making that exception for. Um, but she is betrayed is is pretty pretty boring in a lot of comics. Um, I love her in uh, Grant Morrison's X Men. I think he does a really good job. Uh, Because he's a really great writer. Yes. So uh, Gene is a really good character in that. Do you Um, think that there's a possibility that um, up until this point, like this may just be the first redhead that Logan has ever saw in his life? Like he's like, oh shit, I didn't know they came this way. Like this (laughs) this is definitely my thing. (laughs) I've been hanging out with Madripoor too much. Exactly. Yeah. There's no redheads redheads in Madripoor. Um, Yeah, could be. You know, and she and she's a redhead, like a real redhead, not like a like a ginger. Exactly. You yeah. know, because it's like you can get those fucking Ginny Weasley types, and it's like, like well, kind of have red hair, but like, give me a break, orange girl. Like, <laughs> I don't give need me this. A break, orange girl. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I don't need this, but like an actual like dark red. Yeah. You know, hair. It's it, you know, it's a good look. Like when when I was young, and and you know, we'd sit around having like you know pretty gross objectifying conversations with my dude friends, talking about like what kind of you know what kind of girls do you like, you know. Uh, and my friends would be talking about redheads and all I could imagine were these like Ginny Weasley types, you mm-hmm. know, and it's like, I'm not super into freckles. I'm like, uh, you know, I was just, just thinking about, about that. And I was like, ah, you know, I'm, I'm not really into redheads. I didn't really think about it. And, uh, then I realized that like in fiction and stuff, you know, maybe they were thinking about things like Jean Grey, but my color blindness because of the paper, I couldn't tell her hair was red. Oh, uh, it just, okay. it just kind of looks like brunette to me. It looks brown. Mm. Uh, and it still reads that way in the comics. I just know it's red from context. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. I would have thought about that, but yeah, that's, that's definitely like, cause one of my early, you know, high school love crushes thing was a, was a redheaded girl. So, um, yeah, like seeing Jean gray was probably like a part of that too. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. So because everyone's disgusting when they're 13, especially boys. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like really, really gross. Yeah. And th- that's another thing too, is like, we don't know, you know, Logan has all that life experience, but maybe it's a vampire kind of thing where he's kind of frozen a spot. You know, it's like his whole life is stretched out. So he's got an extended, I mean, this isn't how he's portrayed. I'm just saying this for goofs, but like an extended adolescence, like, um, that little girl in interview with a vampire. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like we're, yeah, you know, frozen in time, but you know. obviously way more mature than her did than the outer body appears. Yeah. Um, so he's maybe still got those hormones running. I don't remember you know, anything his, about those, like the early comic books. Does, does, is there like an early redhead in his life? That seems like something that Marvel would do is shove like a not Jean Grey and <laughs> into Jane Howell's early Jean. life. <laughs> not Jean. Um, <laughs> it's uh I don't I don't think so. I haven't read Origins a long time. I think there is like a little girl though that hangs out. Uh but I, I think every like kind of canon romance is is literally like Yuriko and Mariko. You know, it's it's just uh it's just Japanese ladies whose names end in Ko. Okay. Okay. So you know, it's definitely a a different type for him. Um next question is yeah. from our, yeah. our, our yeah. good friend May. Oh, thank you, Menthols and Beer. Um Yeah, thanks uh my says uh me says via slack 
Uh, my question for today's future cast is really a discussion topic that I'm curious to hear about. Feel free not to do it if you don't know. I have no idea. What editor slash writer team was consulting for Marvel on this? Uh, the Savage Land with the Mutate Circus, momentarily uh, Australia, and the Magneto base feel like the hand of a comic writer saying you need to include this, this, and this. Or was this just them having read the stuff and deciding to include everything, even the stuff that could uh, could have handled being left out? Um, this is kind of goes into Fletch's question about how much research we do for the show, which is, you know, not a lot. Uh, it's, it's, it's my understanding, though, that they were kind of given like, hey, like these are the classic X-Men stories. You need to incorporate these somehow and then kind of given their own way with this. Is, is that what you understand as well? Yes. Um, for some reason, I'm, I'm trying to do this uh, right now, do like research on the fly. Mm-hmm. But I thought that Larry Hama was involved in it. OK, um, he's the guy who did because, OK, he wrote uh, co-wrote the episode of uh, that deals with Weapon X. OK, so I remember that detail. He could have been involved because he is kind of a Marvel writer mm-hmm. from that time. Uh, but I don't know off the top of my head. That's the only name that pops to my tops of mind. But I think that they probably did have a, a kind of mandate. You know, yeah, um, you know, and they it's it's an adaptation. It's not like inspired by. So they're literally setting out to do the same stories or versions of the same stories, you know, so they'd have to hit the stuff, because even if we hate, you know, the Savage Land, like it is an important part of the X-Men mythos, whether we like it or not, you know, it's yeah, we, and I don't <laughs> just want to be yes. very clear <laughs> in, case, in, case, in case I haven't been clear enough on this podcast. I don't. Um, it does feel very much like that, though. Like, it feels like Marvel said, said like, OK, these are the stories you have to include all of this regardless, but like, no matter what. And uh, like, I wonder if the show would have been better if they didn't go to the Savage Land like that. That whole thing just seems seems to read like an obligation of a of a writing project more than anything else. Excuse me. <clears throat> but, yeah, there could be a, a better way to do it. Um, if I'm looking at like looking at the credits just for the show. So there's not specific names involved, but it is was produced by Marvel. Right. Mm-hmm. So like they had. Uh, so imagine the editing teams at the time, you know, the, the people they had access to Marvel's kind of full slate of, of editorial. So Jim, Jim stuff. shooter probably like had, had a hand in some of this, right? Like he probably took a pass I, on some of this stuff. This is right? post shooter. Is think, it post shooter? I can't remember when shooter, like when we got left Marvel or not. So. Yeah. Shooter. I think shooter is eighties, uh, exclusively. Um, so I think this is post shooter. I think this is. Boy, like I, I mean, I could do this research live on air, but I'm not going to. I don't think. I think it was the the '90s folk. Well, I mean, Gary, we don't do it. We don't do it off air, so we might as well not yeah. do it on air. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's why the hard part about it. Um, so, so I mean, this is a long winded way of saying I don't really know. Yeah. Um. You know, sorry again. Sorry to have a bad answer, but like, you know, and and maybe you know, like uh, maybe that other. I hope earlier when I talked about the other Days of Future cast that's out there that I didn't sound mean about it because like i don't know those guys i haven't listened to that show i'm sure they're great um maybe that's uh what they do sure you know yeah, like maybe they take a more like, academic pro- approach to yeah, it like a, yeah. this person wrote this and this is what they're inspired by and i've dug up this interview and stuff and maybe they do that um that's cool it's good that that exists you know it's i like that that's there um i like you know it, it reminds it's like the watch out for fireballs retronauts relationship like yeah those guys are going to like bring in experts and do like a you know two-hour episode on the apple II, and that's just like something we're not going to do you know <laughs> we're just not interested like in the history of that you know it's not it's not for us i'll be um, interested to once we finish uh covering the animated series i'll be interested to go back and seek other media because as soon as we kind of decided to do this i stopped looking at almost everything around the show like i you know i like gifs and like dumb memes with it and stuff like that wolverine picture with the frame is always going to be hilarious no matter what you put in it but um i just again you don't want to if you're writing something or you're doing something like i know game reviewers do this all the time they don't want to read other reviews until they finish writing their own because they don't want to kind of just subconsciously steal from other people so yeah like i'd I'd be curious to listen to those shows or you know read those articles after the fact yeah that's true the um also just speaking of like things for for after the fact uh the used dvd and record store by my house mm-hmm. did a sale last weekend where every dvd was half price and uh, i've been watching dvds again if, after a long period of not doing it because i bought or uh, through through a, a set of circumstances i have a little tiny portable dvd player um so i can like watch you know office reruns in bed before i go to sleep through um, a set of circumstances well <laughs> did you uh, rob a truck I, are you a I, gangster I, I inherited it <laughs> okay um fine. but the uh so, but they had, um, the X-Men anime, you know, that oh, thing. 
Mm -hmm. And it was like two bucks. So I, I bought that. So I'm ready for when we eventually want to talk about the X-Men anime, anime animated series. Uh, the cover of it, I don't know if you've seen it. Mm -hmm. uh, Cyclops' face and neck is so gross and like so nasty, like anime nasty. He's got this like fist of the North Star, like super muscle neck. But then this like absentee chin. It's really, really gross looking. So. Yeah, these I've, I've looked through. I looked. I've looked at images. I haven't watched this stuff. I actually like some of the character designs. I'm kind of into, but uh, <laughs> but boy, like it's anime, man. And Gary, I don't know if you know this. I'm not that big into anime. <laughs> I think Wolverine looks cool uh, in this, and Beast looks all right. Everyone else, I think, could probably jump off a cliff. I don't. know. Colossus I, looks cool. Like it, it's the. But I mean, they're they're definitely doing like that twelve ab thing. Like he's got a twelve pack thing going on, right? Like I wonder if it's a different one because uh, this is like definitely late later era. It has armor in it. Like there's no Colossus, but armor shows up. Oh, I may be uh, looking but... at a different X Men anime then. Are there two? Yeah, it's possible. Animes? Wow, what a world! God, uh, let's, let's not even <laughs> let's not even research that live either because that was yeah. Let's <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get into it. We'll eventually probably probably we'll take a look at it because it's a short enough commitment. It's not like doing all of X Men Evolution, which like. You know, we don't know if we're going to do that, but uh, this is like, you know, it's, it's a short issue or a short run. I want to, so. I want to like dip into Wolverine and the X-Men just because I watched that a couple of years ago. And there's a scene where Wolverine uses his claws to deflect hail as it's hailing. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, even if we just cover, like, even if it's just this conversation that we cover, I just want to put that out in the world because it's fucking ridiculous. That so. is, that's super strange. Okay. Yeah, I'll take it. Our next question via email comes from Joe, and he says, Hey guys, I really love the show and want to thank you for putting it together. It's especially welcome in this modern dystopian hellscape in which every Marvel property up to and including D-listers like Quasar get three movies in a national holiday, except for the X-Men. These days, Marvel wouldn't piss on the X-Men if they were on fire, which, judging by X-Men Apocalypse, I guess they kind of are. Anyway, my question is, are there any characters missing from the core team that you would have liked to see included? Are there any you'd like to see replaced? You guys have talked about this idea a bit, discussing some of the cameo characters you like, and rightly talking extensively about how much Gambit sucks, but I don't think I've heard the question asked directly yet. For me, I've always loved Colossus, even after Scott Lobdell tried to turn him into a rage monster with a borderline uncomfortable fixation on his sister. His appearances on the show were fun, and I didn't even hate the kind of goofy voice acting. Ilyana! Ilyana! I, hey, that was me editorializing. That's not Joe. That's <laughs> uh, I was left wanting more. Is there anyone you guys would rather have on the team? I wonder uh, just the first part of this question. I wonder if this was written before Logan, because like you know, Logan's real good. It, and it definitely Logan. was because we've been getting yeah. these for some for some time now. So I, I don't know exactly yeah. when, but it was written before Logan. Yeah, I mean that doesn't you know we we we'll, we, we talked about or we'll talk about that or whatever however mm -hmm. timey wimey it gets. But the um yeah the uh the way that the movie stuff is treated I think is actually looking up to kind of talk about that in general terms between mm -hmm. uh, Logan. And then I haven't, I know you've watched it, but I'm really excited to check out Legion. Everything I've heard is that it's very good. Um, and yes, yeah. it's, um, and I'm, and this was my fault. I told you, I would try to hook you up with some episodes and like Dropbox has just fucking refused to let me upload this illegal <laughs> copies of X-Men <laughs> Legion. Let us do for this you. crime. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Dropbox. I pay you every month. Let me do crime. <laughs> we got to do crimes. Let us do <laughs> copyright crimes. Dropbox. I mean, like I'm, I see that's the thing. I, I fucking hate, uh, the way that keep watching concurrent TV last. Cause somebody out there is probably like, why do you guys, why do you want to do crimes about it? You should just buy it. It's like, why don't, I don't want to own the entire season, like on a DVD and I'm not going to buy a fucking cable subscription to FX or whatever channel it's on. Yeah. You know, if, I, I if these episodes were like a can... buck a piece, I would do it, but they're like about four bucks a piece. Exactly. You like know? if you go into the iTunes, um, like, or Amazon thing, then they're all like, yeah, like $2 per episode, I think is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's, it's not like a, a short, yeah, yeah, three, yeah, three dollars. And it's like, don't want to spend $30 on the season. That's more than for something I'm going to watch once. It's more than I yeah. want to do. So like, I will see it at some point. I would really like to, but everything, it seems like it's looking up and then that gives me hope for the TV show they're coming out with. So I think that they like, you know, the, they're doing better by X-Men and as far as other like kind of visual media. I didn't realize this and um, I don't want to go into any spoilers about Legion right now. Um, maybe we can do that a little bit later, but did you know that, and somebody in the Slack had told me this, uh, I think it was Fletch actually from the first question uh, that the, I guess the showrunner made a deal where he can 
it's totally separate from the current X-Men universe as far as the movies go. So like you can, it hasn't happened yet, but you could totally, like he apparently is able to just put Logan or Xavier in it if he wants to. And it doesn't have to be McAvoy or or Stewart or Jackman. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's, that makes it it, as much as I like, like these universes kind of tying in together. Like it makes it even more interesting to me. So it makes the future possibilities more interesting for sure. Yeah. You know, I like the idea of them uh, kind of playing things, but the way kind of between days of future past and, and Logan and things like that, like the actual continuity is getting a little Zelda uh, for me, like unraveling it is getting a little annoying, <laughs> you know, to where like being able to let it, leave it behind, I think is probably a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, the second part of the question, uh, who, who should be on the team and who, who should not? uh i definitely am missing iceman uh iceman has always been one of my like for whatever reason favorite characters i think just because he's kind of a you know i've always liked peter parker with his kind of goofy smart assery and you know um, you know bobby drake was always kind of that way in the comic books as well and you know there's something cool about having a dude made of ice and doing cool ice shit even though like i know in the comic books his stuff gets kind of redonkulous i think we talked about that even on the pilot episode but we and I know he shows up eventually in the animated series, but not seeing him for like you know two years at this point. And I don't, I don't, not, not even sure he comes up in the third season. It's kind of a bummer to me. He um, because that would be very similar to my answer too. And and when you think about, it's not just about seeing cool ice shit, which like I am also would like to see cool ice shit, but it's about like kind of filling a niche. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's why I wouldn't like I love Colossus and Colossus would fill this niche, uh, personality wise. Um, but we already have a, a super strong person. We have a rogue. Mm-hmm. Um, we need like the team needs like a goofball. Yeah. You know, who's not like, you know, comic relief, like Jubilee's goofballness is just kind of like, whoa, is me guys. Like, here's a weird <laughs> one liner. I'm going to, I'm here to get kidnapped a lot. Like, Hey guys, there's you know, a phone call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Jubilee's. laughs> hey guys, can let me suture that for you. Um, <laughs> you know, so that that's kind of her goofballness, but we need like, you know, that's always been a big part of the X-Men. Like there's Iceman. And then after Iceman left, it was Nightcrawler. It was yep. kind of like the happy go lucky character. Like there's always been that. Um, I think the team, the animated team really needs that because it's, they kind of disperse that amongst everybody. Like rogue will make jokes. Sometimes Jubilee will sometimes make jokes, but there's not somebody who's like having fun at any point, you know, really on the team kind of consistently. And Wolverine, like the Wolverine, they give people one-liners, but nobody is really goofy. Like everyone has like a dumb one-liner that is almost even out of character for, you know, out of character for it. Like Wolverine in this, in the anime series has some like, like that, the sardine can thing from season two. Yeah. Where he's cutting, like there's some random stuff in there that I don't, I don't really like him. I think having a character like Iceman um, would be really interesting. Who would you want to see removed? I think. I guess I would have to go to Storm or Gambit. Like those are two of my least favorite. Characters. Oh no! Wait, wait. There's Beast too. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, what are you gonna do? <laughs> see, see, I, I don't. Uh, I, I wouldn't remove anybody because I think they fulfill purposes. I would just want them to be better. Gotcha. Like I, I think you can't really do X Men without Storm, even if the animated series Storm is not very good. Um, it's such a core X Men character. Um, Beast again fulfills it. Like he's the team scientist. Like you know, he's that's beast. Um, and then Gambit, like, you know, if nineties X-Men, you need to have this kind of like badass, you know, um, I would, and I don't, you would either be Iceman or Nightcrawler. I think I would add. Yeah. And And both of which would form a really interesting power set. And then also personality set. Uh, Iceman would be cool too, because it would give them the ability to have a character to, um, use their powers in a kind of a, like a real fun way to display without hurting people. Like you could just freeze their feet to the ground and yeah. it was, which was always a big thing with the show is not actually hurting humans, which, <laughs> which is why every mutant that we've seen that like encounters an Android shouts out to the rest of them. They're just an Android. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's like, like Wolverine just is, is so happy that there's robots. I can cut off their like, arms and they, they really back. can't do anything. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, so yeah, Ice Man or Nightcrawler, I think would be awesome. And then yeah. wouldn't uh, wouldn't remove anybody. Just be, I would just improve those those three people. I don't even like when I think about it. Like I don't think the Gambit in the show is poorly rendered. I just think that's just Gambit. Yeah. Like I actually think out of the characterizations on the show, it's kind of one of the best ones. It's just he's such a shit bag. It accurately you know? it, it accurately captures his shit bagness is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> he's actually very good. It's just like you know, and we just have this weird horny Cajun that just hangs out with us. Uh, you know, and he, this is, he's accurate. He's horny cage and accurate. Horny cage, HCA. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's the ACA promise. Yeah. Your ACA promise. Are you having horny Cajun problems? Well, this is a horny Cajun guarantee <laughs> or as, or as we like to call it on here. Guarantee. Just take this trapeze and sound your dick. 
like just, just <laughs> guzzle this guzzle this crystal oh, um, man. I think those are the kinds of hot sauce I remember the name. Yep, the museum yep, hot good. sauces I remember the name of. Okay, thanks. <laughs> want that approval, Agent Daddy. Um, <laughs> Our next email, Gary. Why don't you read it? <laughs> uh, Davey says uh, via email. Another great season. Uh, now more than ever, really, uh, I really need and appreciate the kind of insightful, highbrow content that Davey's <laughs> podcast provides. Thanks, Davey Daddy. Um, <laughs> Despite being hit or miss, season season two still seems to hold up, even if I don't have it hard memorized from childhood the same way I did with season one. Here are some questions to pick from, and jokes on you, we'll do all of them, because that's us. Um, Question one. Uh, You wake up tomorrow, and you've been granted the powers of one ex-person or ex-villain. However, you're not very ambitious and decide to use this power just to make small areas of your existing life more convenient. Which power do you want and what boring and significant ways would you uh, use your new powers to make your life a bit easier? Let's stop after these and, and do them. So we yeah, don't have yeah. to remember. Doing one yeah. by one. Yeah. I, um, I actually talked about this on a podcast um, on Don't Give Up Skeleton recently because somebody said that um, their like useless X-Men power would be the ability to forget things specifically because they wanted to be able to replay Dark Souls <laughs> over and over again, okay. <laughs> which I thought was, was a pretty good one. Um, Some Eternal Sunshine shit too. Yeah, like, that exactly. Could be, you know, yeah. Like at least some X's. Um, and I, I, I kind of, I kind of would have to do that, but like, I just, the other thing that occurred to me is that if I was ever a telekinetic person, I would just be the fattest, laziest telekinetic person. Not that like all fat people are lazy or anything, but I would literally do no exercise. So like, cause would, I yeah, could just do everything with my mind. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 Go um, give me a beer. Oh no, I'm just going to use my mind to do it. Sorry. I'm not even going to spend the, the calories to walk across the, the, you know, kitchen or whatever. It's again, the Simpsons and the Treehouse of Horror where Homer gets the matter transporter and like sets it up next to the toilet so he can like stand and piss into the matter yep. transporter. Yep. <laughs> they, uh, they do that. You just hear Lisa go, Dad! <laughs> like, um, I was actually picturing that time that um, I think it's Bart that gets like super fat that he has to wash myself with a rag yeah. on a stick. Like that would be uh, me telekinetic. That would be like Jeremy Charles Xavier. Like that would be yes. exactly what's happening. <laughs> Um, autumn run the uh, <laughs> um, yeah I, I don't uh, usually when I t- think about making my life uh, like the little little things of life are don't suit themselves that annoy me don't suit themselves to superpowers so like the things I hate are like paying bills balancing checkbooks paying taxes filling out paperwork things like that like I would like to never have to do that yeah, my superpower uh, would be again. living at the Xavier Mansion, so I don't have to fucking bother with any of this stuff. Totally, like uh, that, well, in a roundabout way, like my superpower would probably involve having enough money to pay people to do things like that. So it'd be like, you know, Xavier, and then I would go to millionaires and be like, "Give me ten percent of your money," and then they would do it, and they'd be no worse off, and I would have ten percent of their money, and then Yahtzee. <laughs> you need, is your mutant you know? power just literally being Bernie Sanders? Is that what yeah. your mutant power? Is? <laughs> my, my, it's the mutant power of redistribution of wealth. <laughs> <laughs> my, mutant, my mutant power is the better 2016 election that's what my yeah mutant it, power it's just, is. my mutant power is socialism um <laughs> except it would just be for me it's like i'm saying that like it'd be for everyone and i would try to make it for everyone but in part of the question is just making my life more convenient in a little sure. way so yeah. like in real life if i was had <laughs> professor Sanders' powers i would go through and like you know actually redistribute wealth but in this in this scenario, I'd be like, hey, give me give me a bunch of money. And then I would just pay people to do all that paperwork shit mm-hmm. and not had to pay rent and just like be able to go through life literally never paying attention to any of those tasks. Like I never want to sign my name on another thing. I never want to uh, fill out another form. Things like that. That's my least favorite part of life. Yes. Um, agreed. Yeah. You know. All of that stuff sucks. So, yeah. um, as somebody that's about to do taxes, all of that stuff sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I, I dread when I get like complicated taxes. You know, it's uh, this is the first year since I I stopped working at my other job and just started doing Patreon. So I need to start getting more serious about that stuff. And it's going to suck. Yeah. Um, so, you know, not to complain about it. It's a very cool problem to have. But it's just I, I just hate that stuff. And I, I don't know what it is. It just it drives me nuts. It was a nice thing about when I was married because my ex was really good at that stuff. So it was a good way. Like we made like a team. It's like she mm-hmm. did did our taxes and was like happy to do it. She's like, yeah, I don't mind doing this. She you did know, your and- taxes. You did your podcast. Like that's the, <laughs> like you did the marriage <laughs> podcast. You did yes. the marriage taxes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I did other stuff for the, you know, relationship and stuff too, you know, like, uh, but it was very nice to find somebody who, who thrived on that because there are people who dig that kind of shit, man. Oh yeah. Like it's just like, Oh, this is very satisfying to fill out forms and have them 
be correct. And I just like, it takes me five times as long as it should to do anything like that. Just because I like hate doing it so much. It's like pulling teeth. If you, um, if you ever decide to buy a house, prepare for your worst nightmare. Like buying oh, yeah. a house is like, it's like doing your taxes every year times 12. It's so fucking miserable. So yeah, I, it's a, anyway. it's a good, that's a good reason not to, not to buy a house, but like I will literally ever have enough money to buy a house. Even though now that I'm, uh, you know, possibly looking at other places to live, that I can live cheaper. Mm-hmm. Um, my hometown, like, you know, houses out here in Portland, it's like, you know, $500,000 minimum. My hometown is like $40,000 houses. Yeah. It's bonkers. Like, if you want to live in America's fucking fart basket, like, you can, like, you can, you can, you can afford to live there. House. Yeah. Go yeah. okay, find it's, somewhere with fiber internet, get some internet friends, and then just live for It's just cheap insane. Like, well. if you want to, if you want to commit to never kissing a girl again in your whole life, like, you can <laughs> buy a $40,000 a year house because there's nobody worth dating in my hometown. But, like, if, if it wasn't, if I wasn't so kiss driven, then, like, it would be weirdly tempting to be like, you know, I could probably, like, save up that much money in like seven or eight years and own a house like cash no mortgage own a house that's bonkers oh dude you don't Um, even have to you don't even have to save for seven or eight years like if you can find a house for sixty thousand dollars you can get an fha loan for like nothing and like very no down payment no nothing and just have a note and like you're you know you don't even have to pay your note for the first month and a half (laughs) like you you won't even have to pay anything for six weeks my credit's pretty shitty. This is the kind of hard hitting, like, accent. <laughs> you should make the theme song play under this whole, like, ding, 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 I'm going to find an H&R Block commercial and just put that in here. This is your audit guarantee. Second question. If you could pick any two ex folk to make a couple, who would it be? Which ex person would you take as your date on a slick ex double date with this new couple? Oh man, shipping is what we're doing right now, Gary. Yeah, this, the, this ship, is the shipping this, news. This is what this is. The thing, the thing about this question is, I think that the comics have done almost every variation of male and female interpersonal relationships on the X Men team. Like, yeah, I, I know for a fact I have an X Men comic where like Wolverine and Storm are making out, and even if they don't do it as a long term relationship, they definitely like alternate universe or somebody had and a dream Ultimate or, X-Men. or or they, Ultimate X Men, yeah. yeah, yeah, all that stuff. Um, for, for I don't really, I don't ever think about this stuff. Do you think about this stuff when you watch stuff? No, I'm yeah. I'm so I feel like I'm so out of step with like my peers. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about this today, like as somebody who is kind of vaguely involved in like games culture and games journalism stuff like everybody who and they're they're you know I, I call them my peers and i understand that's batting above my weight class but like you know people who i look up to who are involved in this stuff so like your you know danielle randos and austin walkers and stuff are so into like kind of this weird high school aspect of media to me and i don't say that to be derisive no, um, I mean, this kind of like th- those two people yeah. work for Waypoint and they literally did a high school themed year and game of the year thing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And the like, <laughs> games that deal with that, they're really into, mm-hmm. you know, um, the uh, this kind of like every, you know, every game is horny because every everyone is secretly all these video game characters are secretly fucking. And like to me, I can make like to me, that's can make a joke about that. But it's it's I never I'm just like, yeah, that's actually happening. I really like that. I don't derive any pleasure from it. And I don't uh, I don't know what's what it is, but it makes me feel out of step with people who I look up to a lot. Uh, that aspect. Do you think it's an age thing? Because I feel like I'm the oldest person on the internet for most days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I like, I don't think I, I can't be that much older than, than those guys. Maybe, maybe, but like, if so, it's not, it's not that much. It's like a few years. I feel like I've got a decade on Austin Walker. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I, at, at least like my soul is 20 years older than Austin Walker's is. And I love Austin Walker. There's nothing taken away from him at all. Um, just like, no, no, no. It's, if, if anything, it just, it's taking things away from you. Exactly. He's, he's so advanced yeah. for being 20 soul years. Younger. <laughs> exactly. Like he's already way, way beyond wherever I could be like right now. So, yeah. Um, um, so I don't, I don't really have a good answer to this question. Like, and I, the question of like, which X person would you like to take as your date is always, uh, really, really like awkward for me. Cause it implies that like sexual interest. And like, if you just said like, which person would you like to go on a lunch date with? And there was no like romantic interest there. I, like I could probably answer that and it would probably be, I don't know, like, like let's take Wolverine to some like real weird place and just get him out of his comfort area or something like maybe like that. But like, I don't like, I don't ever want to date Kitty pride. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not real. And not to take anything away from Davey's question because Davey's a really nice dude, but I just, I just don't think about this stuff a lot. 
yeah, Dave, Davey's great. Like, I don't, I don't blame him for this, but I, I think you and I are in the same kind of place with this where it's just, that's not a drive for us. Like it kind of plays into, you know, people on watch out fireballs and, and other podcasts call me a prude about shit because I don't like this stuff. And it's not really prudishness. It's just not fun for me. Mm-hmm. Whereas like actual sex and relationships are great. Like I'm very driven by that kind of thing. It's just the kind of goofy game version of it doesn't do anything for me. And, uh, it, it definitely like, it, it is a, a source of kind of friction. Uh, for me, when I was younger, like there'd be like, I would be like, yeah, man, Kitty Pride or like Rogue. Like I thought Rogue was really hot when I was young. Yeah, because uh, she had you know. enormous breasts. Like, I mean, well, like, <laughs> I mean, I'm, not to like, not to I mean, like yeah. pull the fucking band aid, man. Like she had enormous <laughs> breasts and that was li- and she had bright red hair. Like that was like yeah. kind of the thing. Like she had and that streak, the, the white streak. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. When I met Autumn, she had the racing stripe. So like I, oh, I was man. I'm all in. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> And you know, um, not to make myself sound like a, gi- a giant creep, but like it, when you're that young, like that's kind of all you think about. But um, yes, yeah. The, the other the other podcast I do about supernatural, like the the whole supernatural fan base is just fucking to the brim with shipping and weird names for their ships and everything, and like just just not even getting into not, not jumping into the bathtub with that stuff, but just like peering over the surface and seeing how deep it goes makes me just incredibly creeped out like lengthy fan fiction about these two characters having sex that is not represented in the show at all so like it's yeah. just it's just it's just kind of weird and then have you heard that people do this with actual people too like i've seen examples of people shipping youtubers like like yeah. oh, I, I want i want like you know uh, I, I can't even come up with a youtuber but like um can you imagine if the nostalgia critic fucked the cinema sins guy? Can you imagine the <laughs> exactly. singularity of annoyingness that would have? Have a baby that if it like like Black Bull and if it opened its mouth, the entire world would be torn asunder. What if Jontron and the world's angriest gamer got together and had a baby? <laughs> had a racist baby. Uh, <laughs> what was baby's yeah. first word? The N word. <laughs> like, yeah. It just yeah. automatically was. Cock. 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 <laughs> Is he saying Dada or Kaka? I can't, I can't understand. Um, yeah, it's it's. I, I think that has to. I mean, that is really gross. But I think it has mostly to do with the fact that like people see those people. You know, YouTube personalities is not people because they're mm-hmm. young. You know, it's like all entertainment is kind of you know not human, and and people who are older fall into that too. But there's just something. It is an interesting thing that this is just not an interest. You know, not an interest to me, and I don't. I haven't totally unpacked it. It just doesn't work for me. It doesn't drive me to hate. Like I'm not like, man, I can't believe people fucking do that. Yeah. Um. You know, it's just kind of like, wow, I really don't see the appeal of that. Uh. And I get, you know, I, I kind of get being attracted to a video game character. Like I could, I could put myself in those shoes. It's just not something like. I'm not gonna. <clears throat> it's it's not gonna like g- give me half a stiffy. Like I'm not gonna look at a character and be like, "Oh shit, that is hot." Like I just, I don't. Yeah. My, my, I'm just not wired for that at all. Like I can appreciate the beauty, and I can appreciate like like they were definitely trying to make um the character from Near the new Near game. Like she's definitely because when I play that demo, like you can see almost her whole ass. Like they're definitely mm-hmm. trying to make this a very sexy robot. And I'm like, okay, like she's very pretty. She's very sexy. Like I can see what they're going for. I can see people being attracted to it. It just doesn't like get my radish up. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, uh, I, I, I can't, I'm not saying this is not like, I'm not trying to one up you. I can't get attracted to video game characters. Um, mm-hmm. And part of it, I think is because they are, uh, and this, this applies to real life in a, a weird way where like, I don't, uh, you know, even like it's hard for me to be attracted to like a lot of celebrities too. Like there's there's a weird like kind of arty airbrushness yeah. to to people that I can't that ruins it for me. That ruins any sense of attraction, I think. Um where like I just can't uh you know, I don't know. I need I need like a realness. There's like a, a an imperfection level that I require that never comes across in fiction. You know, that's a that's a really good way to put it. Like the the lack of a realness in somebody just kind of puts me off of it all together. Like, yeah, sure, like <clears throat> like okay, when I you know, you can you can think somebody's sexually hot or attractive or anything, but not actually like want to do anything with them whatsoever. And the older that I've gotten, I hate to sound like the fucking grandpa of this podcast. Yeah, that's, sorry. somebody's gonna review this and be like, These two old guys whose dicks don't work who can't go <laughs> horny about near <laughs> Just won't stop talking about how it's bad that Gambit has a, a healthy male sexual drive. Who are these beta shitheads? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> uh, 
I like his. I like the next question though. <clears throat> yeah. If you want to get into that one, <laughs> let's just take. Let's get. Let's get off from our broken dick chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> broken dick. <laughs> BDC. The BDC of podcasts. Um, uh, Ruckus versus Banshee. Who wins? Um, man, I really want to go. Banshee I want to go fly. Banshee can fly. Yeah, I, did, I forgot yeah. about that. But I feel like Ruckus could fly. He just hasn't bothered to. But man, I, I really want Ruckus to win this because. Just with our experience with Banshee and Generation X, I just never want that to happen again. Yeah, and it's coming. He's coming oh, to the cartoon as well. So I watched those episodes, and uh, yeah. we'll we'll get into it in the main episode. But oh my, have you watched him yet? <laughs> no, I haven't. Dude, Banshee's scream anytime he is doing anything is fucking horrible. It's just like a ah, like it's just yeah. so bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, and then finally, uh, which X Men is cutest? Mm, uh, um, I just it's not Lockjaw if it's Kitty Pryde's dragon. It's um, Lockjaw is the is the inhuman dog. What is Kitty Pryde's dragon's uh, name? It's a uh, Lockheed. Lockheed, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Lockheed's yeah. real cute. Lockheed is the cutest um, sex man. Yeah, Lockheed. Lockheed's a pretty good answer. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, I will say, uh, Eliana was like a little baby and had a little tiny toy nightcrawler for a little while yes that was pretty yes. cute. super cute yeah like yeah. that a lot mm-hmm. Liliana. Liliana. Uh, uh finally uh thanks for the great show nasty boys Can't wait for season three p.s gary i hope that kazar's experience with his tiger as you training roars to be ready to avenge your death uh should you that should the need arise um i do hope that roars outlives me and i think that when i do die he will probably eat my face because yes. that's, that's, that's what, what cats, cats do, do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, sadly but it's okay because i won't be here anymore and uh that will be at least serving some good so oh. so next is james v email and uh just a quick apology james wrote to us right after we recorded the last feedback episode so this is kind of a redo but i had him resend it in again to make sure that his thoughts were all represented um, he says, so I'm not really a big comic fan. And despite knowing a ton of the characters from popular media, it's really strange to go in and see what their stories are. So what I want to know is what do you guys consider the main events of X-Men? What storylines have to happen to make the franchise what it is and what can easily be forgotten? Also, again, missing the point of comics, but what do you think the end of the X-Men would be like? Would that be an important thing to end on? This could be for the characters like the death of Wolverine, but like for real actually dead or just the franchise as a whole. Thank you for being such nasty boys, James. I'm glad that the nasty boys thing is is really sticking. That's been mm-hmm. a lot of fun. I, I'm into it. So, so to break these up, like, what do you consider the main events of the X Men? Um, in the comic books, like, if you're just taking, if you're looking at what is actually there, probably one of the biggest events is uh, Dark Phoenix. Like, that's a huge one. Yeah. Right. Phoenix and Dark Phoenix. Phoenix and Dark Phoenix. Um, yeah. Um. Days the, of Future the, Past. Days of Future Past. Um. Even though that is like a side story. But like it goes into the weird it's it kind of answers the end question is like one mm-hmm. of the end things. Um, the uh, the big the the switch over the like giant size number one mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with, you know, the, the the old team getting kidnapped and stuff and that kind of splintering. You know, that's a big deal. As much as I don't like um, huge crossover events and and with more and Marvel does them all, all, all the time. Um, I really thought what they did with House of M was with the mutants which specifically with the x-men storylines were really interesting like i, I like that a lot like that no more it's, it's weirdly really, really yeah weird. it had a really long leg so like regardless yeah. of how well it was articulated it's an important story um and then there's stuff after that, that i don't know so like after that was utopia which i read a little bit of and that's around when i got out of comics mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um when the x-men started their own island and stuff and now you know i can't speak to before that uh, or after that um but yeah, the you know the House of M is kind of a big deal, and that's a big deal in the Marvel universe as well. Um, and it was written specifically to like, hey, mutants don't feel special anymore. We need to cut down on them. Um, weirdly enough, as much as it's it's kind of shit, uh, Fatal Attractions is still pretty important. Like Magneto coming back and doing that thing, because that caused onslaught, and onslaught actually had huge repercussions. As much mm-hmm. as like you don't see it now, but like a bunch of you know regular Marvel heroes went into a weird void to fight him and stuff. Like it had pretty huge repercussions but it's kind of weird though because in rereading the question like it's it's like what stories are kind of important to the x-men it makes you think of what is kind of important to their core themes uh more than anything mm-hmm. you know because like all this stuff it's kind of good to know if it has a long tail like every once in a while something like someone will reference long, uh onslaught but like if it's just about what the x-men are about there's weird stories that seem kind of throwaway that are actually kind of important like as much as it's not very uh well written or anything 
Age of Apocalypse is kind of cool in that it shows it's a really clear and kind of exaggerated uh, distillation of the difference between Xavier and Magneto. You know, like this is what happens if Magneto, if you don't have that hope, if you're not fighting for, you know, for acceptance. And this is what how far Magneto is willing to go kind of come around on that. Like th it shows one, you know, how important the, the X-Men are and how important their struggle is. But two, that Magneto is redeemable mm -hmm. because in certain circumstances he will, you know, turn turn cloak and turn into like a very, very powerful forthright hero. You know? This is this is a really difficult question to answer without going into um, without basically turning into like what's my favorite arc because like I want to say like yeah. all the Cassandra stuff and the new X Men from Grant Morrison and that's again had long tails like you see her come up again later and later um, for for better or worse uh, but it's you know that's that's probably not something that's central to their story but because well, that that whole that whole run is like meta so yeah, like exactly. Grant Morrison set out to do like here are the different things that the X Men are about I'm going to do one example of all their stories. So like, here's a Sentinel story, here's a space story, here's a future story, you know, here's a story that focuses on the school. Like, I'm just going to do one of the, all of them. So mm -hmm. it actually kind of forms like a libretto, like it's, it's like an X-Men in miniature, you know, if you read that whole, whole run. So I would probably go with um, Dark Phoenix, and uh, I don't remember the name of the arc, maybe you can help me out, Gary, but the, the one that ends up with all of the X-Men, like, being trapped in the Hellfire Club. I think that's, that's in between Phoenix and Dark Phoenix, right? Where Wolverine goes all berserk. <laughs> That's it. That's Dark Phoenix. That is Dark Phoenix. Okay. Well, shit. Yeah. Dark Phoenix. You're, this, you're this thinking is... Phoenix and, and Dark Phoenix, I think. Yeah. Because okay. Phoenix is where Phoenix is on the moon and stuff. That's space. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah things. Yeah, that's that's super important. And then like Follow the Mutants is really important too. That's true. The whole yeah. thing with the Siege mm -hmm. Perilous. Um. You know. And and uh. Yeah. Mutant Massacre is also important. <laughs> um. So it's all pretty much just look at the names of trades. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, they, they, Marvel's they, figured it out. <laughs> yeah. In the, the ones that are collected in, from the 70s and 80s uh, are collected by storyline as opposed to now when they're just kind of like volume three, nothing yeah. left. Issues, you know, issues think, 15 through 20. Like, yeah. They're just just continuing. You know, they're not broken up into storylines. Um, did I get, so, did but, I tell and, you that I got to explain what a siege perilous was to uh, Richard Pilby, Turkson's Frontier? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Did you do uh, was he on Skeleton? Yeah. We recorded the yeah. other day. Uh, I don't know when this is going out, but like spoilers, he'll be on the show eventually. Uh, and yeah, we were talking about something. He's like, well, I know you're like, you're into the X-Men stuff. And like, we were talking about, you know, various dark souls, plot lines and stories and, um, you know, characters changing. And I was, and he was like, well, what, how does this handle like in the X-Men? And I was like, Oh, there's literally a plot device, like a literal device. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's, a, it's a portal <laughs> thing that you walk through that fixes it. Yeah. Uh, um, to do, I think, so his second question was, um, like, what do you imagine the X-Men would be like the end of the X-Men? Oh, would yeah. be Like, and uh, like they've they've written those comics like the, the death of Wolverine is there. But like there's also there were several comics um, like probably five or ten years ago of like the end of the X-Men, the end of Cyclops, the end of Wolverine. Like they, they wrote some a lot of that stuff um, to me I, I, the, with the way that the that they've organized the team and the way that they've made it kind of an institution. I, I kind of don't feel like they tr really should end the X-Men. Like, I feel like that, that X-Men as a, as a, as a, as a beacon more, or I, I guess is what I'm looking for. Um, like as a, as an institution could continue regardless if Xavier or Cyclops or Wolverine is there. And they've played with this in the comics too, where there's, you know, future X-Men teams. They always like, can't, can't it, there's always a Jean Grey for some reason like there's always yeah. a future Jean Grey but um having those future X-Men teams I think is always really really neat like still you know toe in the line of, you know trying to protect humanity and mutant kind alike so yeah it's it's too late to have an ending for the X-Men as a story yeah it's always been written as a serialized piece of fiction that will just kind of evolve and change into things like now if it ends it will be very unsatisfying because it has to contain everything that came up until this point you know, stories, stories that are written to have an end are written different on the way there, you know? Mm -hmm. So the fact, like, you know, the fact that we spent all this, you know, time, uh, you know, wasting, you know, a lot of like Gabriel coming down from space, you know, the third summer's brother, you know, taking over the Shi'ar empire. Like that was like, that was like two years of storyline back when I read comics. And like, that makes no sense in a story with an ending because it's like, why would you waste time on that? Exactly. You know, that was such mm -hmm. a bad story. Um, Hunter X or whatever, the big weird beast that like stalked them. It was so stupid. Like there, there's all these, there's too many bad stories for it to have an end at this point. It has to be eternal. Um, it, they, I mean, they might end it because of uh, market forces. Like it could just be like, we can't, this is not making enough money, you know? Cause like right now Marvel is kind of descendant. Like they're not making a lot of money comics wise. Um, that kind of goes back and forth, you know, but right now they're not making tons of money. Maybe they decide to end the line. Um, it won't be a satisfying ending. 
you know, and it will be an ending. I think that implies a future, like it'll be, you know, an ending to the comics, but not an ending to the characters or the concept. Yeah. Somebody's going to like, there's going to be Cyclops is going to close and lock the front door of the Xavier mansion and then like throw away the key, but like, they're not going to destroy the Xavier mansion, right? Like yeah. just, they're going to, they're going to leave it open so that those characters aren't all going to die. And because comics, they might just come back anyway. Like there's endings exactly. are meaningless in comics that are serialized, mm-hmm. you know, like there are endings to things like, um, Sandman and Lucifer and miniseries, but the big superhero comics are never really going to have that. They're just going to endlessly reboot and stuff as long as they're profitable. So that I don't know a satisfying ending to the X-Men would be that Cyclops locking the door on the mansion, but with the implication that there's the fight still continues. You that know? said, if you're, if you're interested in endings and X-Men, like I cannot recommend Logan enough. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That, that <laughs> and, should be, that's a really, really good ending. Yeah. That, that, it. that is, they, they've set it up to be the last X-Men movie. Like they just put it that far in the future that like, fuck it, they can still make a bunch of them in the meantime. But like that's, sh- that's definitely the ending to that movie franchise yep. in my mind. It and, always will be. And it, it's also, it ends the way we're talking about. It ends with an implied future. Yeah. You know, it just, they're just not going to articulate that. You know, and I hope they never do. Like, we, I don't want Logan to the next generation, you know, to, 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 show, to show up. Like, it'd be massively um, disrespectful. The next question is from Joe. I think, Gary, this one's yours. Uh, how angry is Gambit about censoring anime boobs on the box art when Japanese video games get released in the United States? And how many whitehouse.gov petitions has he started as a result? Uh, love the show. Thanks for doing it. Uh, very in lots. Very in lots. Um, exactly what yeah. I would answer as well. Yeah. Just, I Gambit an adult. Why I no look at these abias? <laughs> why Give you put old, why old. you put panties on the thirteen year old shell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This panty won't hear in the Japanese version. Gambit, no. <laughs> yeah, I gotta see this areola. <laughs> oh God, Gambit, stop! You made it too real. I don't like it anymore. <laughs> Dip, stop dip, talking dip. about areolas nip slip gonna take me all the way <laughs> they call gambit the nip slip king <laughs> the, the nip slip king of the bayou come you, you know gambit you would what. totally be running um oh man do you remember like before it was just before we had like the internet there was that uh website that you could go to and find out where like all of the nude scenes and videos were and like movies oh, were you're talking about mr skin mr skin that's what it was that, that's remember. still around man the uh i have a friend who looks at those videos just for the descriptions because they're really like shitty puns and they're really weird they if, you, really? if you if you like if you like if you got a safe search situation go look at mr skin in this year 2017 and look at how he describes videos because if it's anything like it was a few years ago and my friend was showing up to him they're very funny and just like like this is so fucking weird <laughs> like, just not even the descriptions just the headlines like uh mr skin minute from uh february 3rd 2017 nude christina ricci is everything be the vid. <laughs> Yeah, be the bit. Uh, Mr. Uh, Skin and I, we hang out. I recruited the Marauders for him. This is... Dude, Mr. Skinister? Mr. Skinister! The, the Mr. <laughs> in the universe version that like, posts pictures of the different oh, X-Men when they have nip slips and shit. That's why he's been trying to breed uh, Cyclops and Gene to create the perfect <laughs> nip slip situation. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> oh, Mr. Fucking Skinister, man. That's, that is that's just why, great. That's why Gambit signed up with him because he thought it was Mr. Skinister, but it was Mr. Sinister and he'd already signed a contract. So, oh. All right. So I'm I'm just, oh yeah, there's totally, wow, that just made a pop up happen in Chrome. That's, that's impressive. Oh, that's, yeah. That's an unsafe un- search you got. Pull back. Um. Wow. Yeah. The the, the descriptions. It, like listeners, please go listen. Go go to Mister. Actually, you know what? Don't go to Mister Skin. Don't do that. <laughs> it's, yeah. You're you're okay. Oh uh, God. Who incidentally form a perfect trifecta of brunette, blonde, and redhead? These lost gems are awash in a creepy tale of a nympho Harris. Okay, yeah, we're out. That, we're that, done. That, that, we're getting out of this. <laughs> Closing that tab. Uh. Um. Do 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 do. Let me go back to my notes so we can get to the next question. Thank you, Joe, for that question. Um, yeah, thank you. Marco sent this this YouTube video, which I'll be sure to put in the show notes. Have you, I think you've looked at this, right? Yeah, I watched this. this, this I'd seen it before. Um, yeah. This is really good, though. <laughs> yeah, this is. Um, why isn't it copying and pasting for me? It's just a. Uh, it's a supercut of Professor Xavier screaming in the animated series, <laughs> <laughs> which is just it's really good. Professor X screaming, and it, it, if you watch it all together, because some of the scenes are very long. 
And the, that voice actor just does really great work with his like weird voice crack scream. Oh, it's so, it's so consistent. Like it's it's uh, all over the yeah. place. It's very funny. Um, yeah. I love it. It's very, very good. Thank you, Marco, for that one. Um, Owen sent this into the contact form. Uh, hey, guys, love the show. As an old school X fan, I really enjoy hearing you lovingly poke fun at the good, bad, and ugly of a series. What are your thoughts on Logan that comes out in a week as I'm writing this? It's getting great reviews, and I'm quite excited for it, which happen- hasn't happened in an X movie in a good while. Thanks for all of the laughs. Owen, you're in luck because uh, the week, the next episode after this feedback episode is going to be all about Logan. <laughs> so you, yeah, can we're, hear, we're, you can hear all about it. We're doing a Logan special report. Yeah. Uh, Oh shit! And a good X Men movie came out. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! Clear, yeah. clear the schedule. I guess actually, I, mean, I didn't think about it. It's actually going to be coming out before this feedback episode. So, Owen, oh, you're welcome. We've already yeah, done it. <laughs> you're in luck. Go back. You missed an episode. Um, um, spoiler alert: yeah. We like it. Yeah, yeah, and we, you can hear us uh, in detail about that. And, uh, yeah. But uh, you know, just kind of in general terms, like I too am very, very happy to see you know an X Men movie kind of be back after Apocalypse. Yeah, so. the the other stuff that I've heard about X-Men movies is, um, I guess the working title for the next mainline is X-Men Supernova. And uh, that Sophie Turner yeah. chick has confirmed that she's going to be playing uh, Jean Grey, which Supernova, Jean Grey, almost definitely going to go like a Phoenix, Dark Phoenix thing, which, I mean... I, I mean, it'll, it'll be Phoenix thing, because like Dark Phoenix, I, I always get them confused too, but they're so different. Like Dark Phoenix is all Hellfire Club shit it's like about yeah. mind control and stuff I guess, yeah phoenix I guess, is all about the imperial guard and like space space birds true yeah i guess so, I, yeah, I always I, I, I group them all together because of all the stuff like that she did <laughs> at, like she, when they p- bring her on trial and all that stuff like that's yeah yeah that's it's, it's really easy to get all that stuff confused i don't know man like i, I just can't imagine x-men in space just, just i just can't no, imagine no, like, I, the movie working the, the, very well. the space side of marvel bums me out real bad like um since i i went for some reason i saw like three movies this weekend um one of them at home i saw two movies in the theater which meant i saw a lot of trailers which means i watched the guardians of the galaxy trailer like twice i'm like i'm not the biggest guardians of the galaxy one fan mm-hmm. and part of it is it's just like you know the carry it's kind of fun you know they, the soundtrack is fun it's designed to be fun part of it is like i feel like i'm being manipulated but part of it is just that like marvel space stuff sucks like the the antagonists suck the you know the the collector sucks. I don't like any of the stuff in space. Like I, I kind of like the characters that are the actual, the, the superhero team. Mm-hmm. But that first movie like is so in need of like an anti, like a villain, you know, like the, the actual world ending threat is so fucking boring. Yeah. Not, not either one of the two dudes that are dressed up in like blue paint that are the villains in that movie. Cause Oh God, I can't even yeah. like what, who cares about the villain in guardians of the galaxy? It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And it's literally almost indistinguishable between apocalypse and that guy right, from the X-Men yeah, that, apocalypse movie. It's fucking crazy. That's the thing, you know, and at the very least like visually, you know, uh, between like Ronan, the accuser and apocalypse and like they, at the very least they made apocalypse in that, uh, you know, the, the movie, um, the X-Men movie, he at least isn't just like, I'm going to destroy the world in a big vortex in the sky. Like he kind of does that at the end, but they also have to fight him. And there's the cool sky, you know, skyscape thing where he grows all big and stuff that's kind of fun you know but the marvel movies need to stop just having the villain be a gigantic wormhole opening in the sky yep i read that i read that somewhere and didn't realize like exactly how often that happens but it's like you know avengers guardians of the galaxy doctor strange like it is you know uh it is always the villain as a wormhole in the sky <laughs> and it fucking sucks like you you need to have characters as your bad guys that's why like iron man 3 is so cool is because like it's actually the it's a bad it's a character yep you know, it, this all plays it. This is all like fucking soul ascender shit. Like this yep, is just applies yep. to all media. It's not just movies, but like you have to have your antagonist be a character or you will not have a good piece of art. Um, Like period. Like I just don't, I don't think you can get around it because if you can't think, you know, the, the bad guy doesn't have any motivation. Like it just makes it so much more boring for, or at least for me, like it, it makes it totally not work for me. Um, Captain America two was really successful with this as well of yeah. making like you know, there was obviously a villain there and there was, and they set up Bucky to be the main villain, but he wasn't the main villain. Like Hydra ended up being the main villain of that movie, yeah. which was super interesting. And like, like that movie just being basically a spy movie, except like a couple of these guys can do some crazy shit. Like not, not you know what I'm saying? Like just replacing yeah. James Bond like gadgets with super strength and they're done. Well, even so. right. So even like um, Captain America, like civil war, which doesn't like it, the villain part of it is not super strong, but it has like, the, it's, it's an internal conflict so both sides of the conflict are really interesting mm-hmm. 
you know, that's really what it is, whether as a, as opposed to a villain, like either side of the conflict, it's two ideal ideologies and they're both like interesting or even like something like, you know, everybody shits on Avengers too, but like at the very least Ultron has like a motivation, you know, he's a, he's definitely a character oh, yeah. like James, like, uh, you know, James and that, a lot of that's yeah. James Spader's like performance mm -hmm. and, you know, say what you will about that movie. Like it's, you know, it has kind of a silly ending. There's like problems with it, but it's, I think it's more successful than these like go fight, you know, a gigantic wormhole in the sky shits, you know, just because it is uh, like, I still, I, I like that movie more than I like Guardians of the Galaxy one. Like it's not a better movie, but I like it more because it's kind of fun to watch a villain that has motivations. Like there's parts where he's literally just kind of like, he's lonely. You know, he's sad because the Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are going to leave, mm -hmm. you know, like that's like, like imagine Ronan the accuser doing that. Like he's just a big stone <laughs> strong guy, you know, I don't know. Like that, that's very important to me in, in fiction. Yeah, I was um, I don't remember who was watching X-Men Apocalypse. Apologies. Some, I think it was Juiced and Slack um, was watching X-Men Apocalypse. And he, I was like, yeah, you know, I, Oscar Isaac was totally wasted in that movie. And he was like that was Oscar Isaac. Like you can't even, you don't even know who that guy is. And that, that guy's a fun actor. Like he's a really good fun actor. And uh, you know, I, man, like just completely fucking wasted in the, and I thought people were being a little mean to it when the preview started coming out and calling him like a power Rangers villain, but it kind of ended up being just a power Rangers. Villain. <laughs> yeah, it's, man, uh, that trailer for power Rangers makes me want to kill myself. That looks so stupid. <laughs> like, <laughs> Is it the um, like, is it the teaser trailer where they like set it up so it's definitely not the Power Rangers until the very end? No, or is it the big one, it, little big long one? I watched the big long one twice yeah. this weekend, and like <laughs> it's it's I like I mean I could I couldn't care about Power Rangers less um, mm -hmm. from you know the actual property, but watching the trailer, it looks so bad. It's like so dumb looking. Like everybody looks like shit. The villain looks like shit. The main characters look really bad. The little like robot buddy looks bad. Um, the little kid, like the teenagers are really bad actors. Yes. Like, I can't believe we're in the cave at the same time. You know, <laughs> it's like, oh, no, okay, Dean Venture. Like, <laughs> um, man, does that, that movie would be so much better if it was just Dean and Hank Venture. They got to be the power, That'd be awesome. power as, as, as They get to be all of them. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they have to figure out which ones are going to be at one time. We, we, we're making that joke, but they literally did the Voltron thing and, and the Venture brothers, like with the, yeah, uh, well, they did Mecha Shiva, but I'm thinking of um, Rusty Venture Jr. or whatever. When he has yeah, his little oh, team yeah, on, yeah. on Spider Skull Island and they have to go attack the villain <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, the, the, the guy who is uh, the uh, it's the, with the uh, the Incredibles or the the fan, Mr. Fantastic exactly. uh, characters yeah, yeah. and the one who uh, yeah, who makes the clown ice cream cone. God damn, let's um, just do this exact same show except for the Venture Brothers. I, you know what? Like That would be a very different show, but I would totally do an episode by episode Venture yeah. Brothers show. There's so like, many, I love the Venture Brothers. That's just, that's an episode. Scary. That's a show that I could like really get into the research part because I know for a fact that there are just references flying over my head at all times. Like yeah. the, the deep well of weird musicians that he pulls, and like you know David Bowie and Iggy Pop and that other weird guy from that band, Brian Eno. Yeah, like I'm Brian Eno. Show here come the warm jets. <laughs> the um when yeah that that show is is like a laser guided missile directly into my heart. Mm. Uh, if you uh, if you haven't seen it yet, so first of all, like we should. I don't know. We should talk about doing that at some point once this is over. Cause that's a, that's a good <laughs> that's a idea. Really for good this idea. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea for once we've done all the X-Men stuff we want to do. So, uh, heard it here first folks, but the, um, there's a website called the Mantis eye experiment, which is a guy who compiles all the weird references mm -hmm. and stuff to venture brothers things. And that website's really fun. Um, he does a really good job of just kind of like, you know, because the, the show is so rich in background detail that like, again, is all stuff that I like, I pick up probably about 70% of it, which is the perfect number Yep. because there's still time for me to be surprised and have that fun doing research. But it's just like, I know what this is. Uh, you know, it's not Brian, you know, it's Klaus Nomi is the other person you're talking about. In I, that, was, I was, I was, I said Brian, like, yeah, yeah. There was like Klaus guy. Brian like Nino shows up German as well. Dude. Yeah. Cause yeah. there is, there is a part where the worm jets show up. <laughs> like everyone's pissed, like freaking out. Um, but the, uh, yeah, Klaus Nomi shows up and has his sonic scream. Um, God, that's a good show. God, that's a okay. Well, yeah, show. let's, yeah, we'll let's see, see you guys in a year and we'll, <laughs> yeah, we'll give, give us a year out. or two. We'll work on that. Yeah. We'll work on it. Um, finally, our last thing I just wanted to mention, uh, not, our, my, it's like a news this isn't a question it's a little news report yeah yeah um this guy thunderbird has been really cool dming us stuff um he he was giving us like the the proper air date order for season three and stuff while we were figuring that stuff out so thank you for for that but also he sent us some links to we talked about it earlier but those x-men the animated series like the people that actually created the show are getting together to do a book which should be out in july which i'll be, I'll be very interested to read and um he was sending us some, some like various links and, and things to that so thank you for that <clears throat> i just wanted yeah. to call attention to it so 
I'm interested in a book about the show. Like I will pick that up and that will up my research. Like I will, I will, I will read the entry on an episode before we talk about it. Um, I wouldn't be like, depending on the way the book is like, I wouldn't be against doing an episode or two on it, depending, depending on how in depth yeah. it goes and what kind of information it gets out of it. Like I wouldn't mind doing a book report episode at all. So. At the very least, yeah, the very least we could, yeah, we could do a review. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm into that. Um, this writing yeah. sucks. They should have gotten better voice actors. I doubt that, but that would be very, very funny. Yeah. <laughs> Why are all the gambit pages stuck together? <laughs> This book is new. <laughs> Why did this book come in a brown paper bag? Where am I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with the cartoon devil on it. God damn it. Um, so that's it for our, our feedback episode. Thank you guys yep. very much. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the Legion episode. Uh, at long last, after three kind of uh, interstitial episodes, next episode we are starting season three. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. In earnest. So uh, thank you for joining us on that. Um, we're if, looking forward to that as well. If you'd like to watch along with the show, um, you can go to days of future com slash schedule. And I'll have by this point posted up our schedule of episodes. So you can see which episodes of the show we're covering on which episode of the podcast. And then what the um, air date is for each one of those. So you can know when you can get stuff in. And then um, as always, you don't have to wait till the end of the series uh, for us to, to, to write in your questions or comments. I save them throughout the time. So just, you know, send me whatever at, D-O-F-C podcast at gmail.com or you can go to the contact form on days of future cast.com and you know send us all of your questions or comments absolutely yeah um you can also support the entire duck feed network if you go to patreon.com forward slash duck feed tv um really do appreciate that that keeps the lights on lets us do cool shit and makes this show possible um so uh, we really really do appreciate that and you get cool bonus stuff um and you make cool things happen you can go to that website and find all that stuff out um this is the next episode of this that comes out is that correct no Jimmy? logan the logan episode will be the uh, yes. next episode. um i think at the time this comes out uh so it'll be this will be in what about three weeks three weeks yeah. no, three so weeks? not this saturday um, but two saturdays past it my uh my kickstarter is still running uh, at the time you hear this so if you uh, find me on social media i don't have the link available because it'll be a big you know a string of numbers and letters it'll be nonsense um but if you go find me on social media at g-a-r-y-b-u-h gary ba um i'll have it pinned um you can see the kickstarter for the second power world's book atomic a post-nuclear superstation adventure uh and really appreciate your help with that and it would looks you have seen the art uh, already from nick it's really phenomenal looking and uh, i'm really looking forward to making it but books are expensive and I need your help to do it. So if you can check out that Kickstarter, if you're able to kick in a few bucks, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, do that. Go check that out. What is, uh, what's your Twitter handle, Jeremy? Oh, I'm at JG Greer. You can find me and all of the other stuff I do there. That's probably the easiest way to go. Um, and we will see you next time to begin coverage of season three of the animated series. Absolutely. And uh, have a good night. Gambit, no. Yeah, so uh, Brian Wade is going to start his own podcast, possibly. Oh, yeah. And it's um, the, he told me the concept is he's going to try to get people who aren't familiar with Star Wars, aren't familiar with the extended universe of Star Wars, to read books so that they can goof on them for a little while. So he told me to read okay. this. He told me to read this book, and like in the first two chapters, Luke uses the Force to explore Leia's womb, where she has two twins that she's you know Ooh. pregnant with. And I'm like, I, I texted him. I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you making me do? Ooh, Ooh. yeah, no, yeah. man, Star Wars is bad. Star Wars is not I, great. like. I can't wait yeah, to watch Star Rogue Wars. One tomorrow. Star Wars is not great. Oh, that's it's, it's such a it's such a bad thing. Um, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> um. <laughs> But I don't, yeah, I don't good, know if that'll actually that. happen or not. We're, we're supposed to be recording that on Sunday, but I don't know what he's going to like do long term. So. So, so you think that he's maybe just tricking you into reading that without getting any content out of it? He's just fucking you, know, you over? You know, he that would actually... <laughs> motherfucker, it's I didn't real, think it's about real, that. It's a, it's a real Brian move. I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I did not I did not think about that, Gary. I'm, I'm going to be honest oh, with you. If he, he got if catfished. He, if he got me, if he catfished me into reading a goddamn Star Wars book, uh, it was worth it though because I was trying to explain stuff to Autumn, and uh, that got us onto a Wikipedia hole for Luke. <laughs> oh, sure, Luke. Yeah. Luke showed up. Luke. Yeah. 
it's fun. Boy, man, the the idea like Luke Skywalker explores Leia's womb using yeah, the using the like force. I I hate Star Wars so much. <laughs> <laughs> like it is so bad. <laughs> like it's not. I know. I understand all that stuff was stricken from the record, but it doesn't mean that it wasn't approved. It doesn't mean that like the Star Wars like license holders are like yeah. Yeah, that seems like a good uh, yeah, yeah, good that's, thing that's to explore. Fi- that's, that's fine. Yeah, let's go into that. <laughs> yeah, what, what a good what a good story to do. Oh my god, is it bad? Gambit, no. And I'm Gary Butterfield. And oh shit, is... I'm not recording. <laughs> nope. I'm Gary Butterfield, and I <laughs> not recording. Really <laughs> fucked up. Okay, uh, now I'm recording. Shit, I was just like, why am I just looking at Audacity? Why don't I have this open? <laughs> uh, <Not at> all. <laughs> Gambit, no. So yeah, I'm very surprised by the Neo reviews as well. Um. Nobody, my friend, um, the most trusted person to talk about it is my friend, or that I've heard talk about it is my uh, old roommate, Will, who I think is reviewing it for AV Club. Mm-hmm. And it's much more measured. Like, he's been sending me texts about it, and he's just like, the bosses are kind of bullshit. The moment-to-moment combat is pretty fun. The loot thing is the worst thing in the fucking world. Um, you know, like, it sounds right. Yeah. You know, and he's like, you get spells eventually that make the difficulty wall feel less harsh. Um you know, fairly on. Like he says, you get a thing that slows down all the other enemies in the world and it like does totally breaks the souls game. Like it just doesn't work to do so. Like there's, he says like it, it eventually gives you tools to kind of deal with the overwhelming difficulty of it. Um, but the bosses never get great. And the loot thing he spends like he's loot his inventory. It literally fills up and he spends like five minutes selling garbage, uh, which yeah. is my fear. And that's what loot systems always do. And uh, watching Peeves feed today, and because um, I guess he got an early copy of it, and there's some weird mechanic where, like, you know how you can summon somebody to go fight them or whatever, like that's been in the betas. Uh, yeah. Apparently, like, there's things where, like, you can get an like all of their loot from that, but it'll be RNG versions of their loot. So, like, you'll get the same katana, but it'll have different stats, and it rolls every time or something. Like, it's there's some bonkers shit in there. So. And and that's an appeal to some people who just like who just really like picking up garbage. Uh, I hate it. And I hate it in the demo and I would hate it in the real game. Like the actual good reviews, like the Jim Sterling review, um, I think I read a couple like four out of fives as well that were like, this is good. It has this problem, but it's good. Um, and then Will saying that like at the base level, it's fun and not nearly as just like hateful as it the demo has made it out to be. Um, makes me kind of curious about it, but not like I don't feel like just, you know, paying 60 bucks for it right now. You know, I'm not I'm not yeah. in a hurry. Like, uh I, uh, you know, I'm interested, but not, I don't care, I don't care <clears throat> much. Like it's, you know, I'm, I'm, it's not driving me. Same. You know? Like, I, um, tomorrow night I'm going to visit my sister. So I'm not gonna have any time tomorrow night, Thursday night, autumn gets back in town and she's been gone for most of the week. So like me and her will probably do something. And then like, I've got appointments all day, Thursday and Friday. So like my Friday night rolls around. I'm like, not going to be wanting to spend it with like a hardcore difficulty game in a setting that I care absolutely nothing about whatsoever yeah that's the other um, thing too is a lot of people i think are way more into feudal japan than i am <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like if they could they could literally like have looked it up on wikipedia and they would be more into it than i am. yeah exactly <laughs> i called it japanese the other day and got like or i called like kung fu japanese or something like i got my i got my asian cultures mixed up and got yelled at on a podcast the other day and i was like i'm yeah. sorry i don't i don't give a shit about any of this stuff like yeah. i realized you should definitely correct me so i'm using the right thing but like i really i don't care enough about like this game to learn it so yeah i mean that that's more or less where i'm at as well like it's it's not uh interesting to me um and that's you know it's not it's not bad i don't want to wipe from the earth i know it's very interesting to people and it's a creative setting it's not just like medieval europe which is like you know didn't need that again i guess but um it actually turns me off like samurai stuff generally turns me off i'm like i like i go see kung fu movies with my friends like once a month um, probably like every other month I go with them and it's fun to watch a movie because it's kind of bonkers and like there are these weird it's not just that it's kung fu it's that there's these weird grindhouse exploitation movies from the 70s mm-hmm. uh, and are just like really fun to watch and ex- experimental and crazy and I know the game won't be that like I'm sure that plot is humorless and serious you know and it has to do with like oni spirits and shit and it just that does uh, it just makes me makes my brain go to sleep Gambit, no.